Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 and I wanted to give you guys an update on a project that's been long going for, you know, it's been ongoing for quite a while. Uh, here you can see my, um, my clear Game Boy Pocket and I did a video not long ago trying to fix the LCD. I got a replacement LCD so the other one's just for testing and scraps. But um, you can see right here, this is not stock. This is a, um, a PIC microprocessor that I inserted along with a, um, what was it, a Kish Bent um, RGB LED mod kit and I inverted the uh, polarizing filter on the bottom. So if you can see that is corrupted. There we go. Um, way I program this, there are a couple of uh, weird oddities and you're seeing some of them right now. <laughs> um, it's interesting, different colors, um, you'll have to change the contrast to make it visible. Um, let me just get it to focus. Okay, good enough. Yes, there is a little bit of a hot spot. It's not nearly as noticeable as it is here, what it's showing. Um, interesting thing, I didn't realize how the uh, Game Boy pulls the, um, the I.O. is uh, it must pulse them. It must read them essentially like a matrix because if I press and hold the... Um, the way I program this is if you hold the um, select button, you can press up and down to change the colors. Now, I'm just holding it onto it, and uh, it likes to toggle about quite a bit. But yeah, uh, you can see I can get it to show up in uh, different colors. This is an RGB screen, after all. Uh, it looks really cool um, if, if it would cooperate. The idea was to be able to toggle between all these different colors. That looks really cool green. Um, to be able to toggle just by pressing the buttons and whatnot. But it appears that I'm going to need some sort of... Maybe I'll drill a little button here that you can toggle. Not necessarily up down, but just a single button. Because this is just too much trouble. It is working basically reading the button inputs. But as I said, the way it's... Um, you know, it's implemented by Nintendo, the um, hardware for the button reads, it must multiplex them or something because when I hook this up on a breadboard, it works perfectly. But um, if you press and hold it, you get weird problems. But anyway, that looks really cool. <laughs> I just, I really like that. Yeah, so I, I'll get around to um, getting this guy to work properly. But anyway. Just messing around now. See? Even... And oddly enough, it crashes. I think that's a power consumption issue, though. Uh, whatever. Anyway. Interestingly enough, it also doesn't pull when it's on that screen. It only pulls when it gets into a game, oddly enough. Anyway, I guess that's enough of me messing around with this. I'll um, I'll get this guy to properly work. Um, I'll have to change the way. I wanted to make it real cool so that you just use the original buttons, didn't have to drill anything or modify the case. But that looks to be not quite possible. So it's easy enough to modify my code to add a single button, maybe on the top here, just a little tack switch. I am planning on doing the um, a bivert mod. I have a um, a hex inverter that I can do to the, um, apply to the LCD line so that it, it basically is inverted twice, once with the polarizing filter and electrically on top of that. So you get a lot uh, crisper contrast that way. But anyway, I've rambled on long enough and I'm kind of tired. I've been working on this for a little bit. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. I'll uh, update you guys after I get this uh, working a little bit more. So until then, see ya.